Our next guest is uh, Roland Warren, an inspirational servant leader with a heart for Christ and a mind for business. After 20 years in the corporate world, Roland spent 11 years as president of National Fatherhood Initiative before joining CareNet in 2012 as president and CEO. Roland is also the author of the book, Bad Dads of the Bible, a fresh look at how some of the most revered men of the Bible made some major fathering mistakes that all dads can learn from. Here is Roland Warren, welcome. Good afternoon. Well, that's pretty weak. I got a little self-esteem. I need more than that. Let's, let's try that again. Good afternoon. good afternoon. All right. Good, good, good. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's the reason why you didn't respond. Duh. That's right. That's right. I've moved ahead. So good morning. Thank you very much. All right. Anyway, um, great to be with you. Delighted to be here today. And um, I want to just start off and just read you just a couple of points uh, to kind of get started. So here's the first one. Uh, men need to be supported and empowered to make life-affirming decisions, just as women do. The church has to realize that being pro-life includes supporting those facing unplanned pregnancies. We present women and men with alternatives to abortion so that they can choose life for their unborn children and abundant life for their families. Life decisions need life support, and the church is God's instrument to provide life support to women, men, and families to choose life. Now, can anybody tell me what those four statements have in common? Anyone? Ah, it's a trick question. Actually, they're all less than 144 characters. 140 characters, rather. Right? So these are all tweets that, you know, that, that, that CareNet has put out. Uh, we've done thousands of tweets. And, you know, for me, you know, this conversation is about social media, but I, I've got to say for me, I'm more focused on the social part than the media part. I'm more focused right now on the content than the containers. I mean, containers change. I mean, we use phones, we use all kinds of different technologies, but it's the content that's most important. And what I'm hopeful to do uh, at the time that I have is to talk more about the content of what's the kind of messages that we need to be be sending out. So last year, you know, Karen went through a strategic planning process, and in that process, we came up with a new vision and a new mission. And I'm going to read our our vision statement for it for you. Karen envisions a culture where women and men faced with pregnancy decisions are transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ and empowered to choose life for their unborn children and abundant life for their families. So the three sound bites are choose Jesus, choose life, choose family. Okay? Our mission. Acknowledging that all human life begins at conception and is worthy of protection. Karen offers compassion hope and help to anyone considering abortion by offering realistic alternatives and Christ-centered support through our life-affirming network of pregnancy centers, organizations, and individuals. So the reason I, I want to start with that is because hopefully what you're seeing in here is a narrative that's creating something that's bigger than pro-life. And what I mean by that is that we have to be more than just pro-life. We have to be pro-abundant life. And, and then you have to ask yourself the question, well, what does abundant life look like to a baby? You, you see, you know, a, a doctor can deliver a baby like Kermit Gosnell delivered babies in Philadelphia and then end the life. That's life, but it's not abundant life. Or the doctor can deliver a baby and hand him to a single mom. Now, I grew up with a single mom. I understand very, very clearly how difficult that can be for mothers and for kids. Is that better than abortion? Well, absolutely, of course. No question about it. But is that really abundant life as God designed? Or the doctor can deliver that baby and hand that baby to a father and mother united in marriage, loving each other and loving their child. Ah, that's abundant life. And how do we know that? We know that because that's the story of Mary and Joseph. That's the story of Christ. You see, from Mary and Joseph's perspective, Jesus was unplanned. They had hopes and dreams and aspirations, all of these things that didn't include a baby. And God had a plan to make sure that Mary's unplanned pregnancy wasn't a crisis pregnancy. You see, the holy family was holy family, a father and mother united in marriage, loving each other and loving their child. See, and so I, I, when I start to look at the issue and I look at how we're talking about the issue, my view is we've got to be expanding the content 
here. It's not just about saving a baby. It's about raising a child. And so when we're using social media and all these different platforms, we have to be focused on expanding that vision. I mean, when you think about it, folks on the other side say, oh, we care about is, you know, saving babies. And, you know, we kind of, you know, we kind of respond to that because they frame the issue that it's a woman's issue plus a question mark. And the question mark could be product of conception, that it could be choice. And now Planned Parenthood says it's complicated. It's just complicated. It's a woman plus something complicated. It's just complicated. And it, in a sense, we almost respond to that. Well, no, it's about babies. And then we got sort of attacked saying, well, you don't care about women. He said, no, no, we care about women and babies. And we said, love them both. And the reality is that when you look at it from, from God's perspective, when you, look at, when you look at our issue from that perspective, it's bigger than that. Yes, it's about the woman. Yes, it's about the baby. But it's about the father and it's about the family. And we need to have a very consistent narrative in terms of what we're talking about. So, so when you're thinking about you know, communicating, I don't care, social media, whatever platform, the social message that we need to be putting out into the public square that's winsome, that's engaging, and that's true, and that's supported by God's design. It has to be a message that articulates a vision beyond just saving babies, but it's also about building families. I mean, you look at the data, 85% of the women have abortion that are unmarried. 85%. What's that tell you? We have a, we, this is all linked to marriage. We can't silo our issues. We have to have a consistent narrative. Now, the last place I'm going to end with, because i only got a few minutes left here, is to talk about well, how do we do that? Now, I'm in the pregnancy center business, so to speak, and that's the work that we do. But it's beyond, it, it's beyond our work, because the reality is that there is an instrument that God put on this earth designed for this issue, and it's the church. And what we have to do in terms of our conversation, we have to, the church can't outsource this issue to the pregnancy center movement, to the pro-life movement. See, James 1, 26, 27 says, the religion that is pure and faultless in God's sight, what did you care for widows and orphans, right? Well, what, when that was written, what was a widow? What was a mother without a husband? And what was an orphan? It was a child without a father. So in a sense, we're in the widow and orphan business, and what we're doing as a pair church ministry is working to help the church understand that that is religion as pure and false, and we have to move this issue into the church to provide that level of support because that's the only way you're going to be able to create that narrative that expands the scope of our work from just saving babies, as God honoring as important as it is, but to also to building strong families for those babies to, to grow up in. So again, to me, it's all about the content. The containers will change. We tweet now, who knows what we'll be doing 20 years from now. But what's the content that we're going to be putting out? And I really believe strongly that it's time for a new day and a new beginning in terms of how we're talking about this issue, that we have to expand the scope. And we have right there the birth of Christ, which is the model for what we need to do. See, see Christ had abundant life and became abundant life for us all. And that abundant life narrative is one that's built around this notion of the family as God designed it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Roland, for your wise words and your service to women and children and families.